testing, testing, one, two, three, testing, testing. Welcome to the Honors Latin Class Snow Day edition. Today, we are going to talk about an interesting story. We were more to us in trot. The zombie enters. This is a story filled with suspense, drama, gerunds, and gerundives. Okay, let's take a peek at our first sentence. We were more, more to us scolam in trawit, ad consumendum. The zombie entered the school. And then we have this. Odd plus an ND always means purpose. For the purpose of doing what? For the purpose of eating. So this ND word here is a gerund. This whole word is a gerund acting as a direct object of our preposition odd. Odd takes a noun object, which makes sense here, for the purpose of eating. Okay, let's look at our second sentence. We were more to us scolam in trawit ad consumandos discipulos. We have some more details here. He doesn't just come into the school to eat, but he comes to the school for the specific purpose of eating the students. So here, consumandos is a gerundive because it has an antecedent discipulos. So ad is a preposition and it's taking discipulos as its object, and discipulos is being modified by the gerundive. So what we have here is this thing called the gerund gerundive flip-flop. Basically, the Romans didn't like it when a gerund took a direct object. For example, in sentence one, we could have easily said the zombie entered the school for the purpose of eating and then put in what the zombie was going to eat in the accusative case for the purpose of eating the students. However, the Romans had this thing where they didn't like it when the gerund took that accusative object, so instead they flipped it around. Instead of giving consumendum a direct object, they took ad and they um, took the consumendos. They turned that gerund into a gerundive, modifying discipulos instead. So instead of saying for the purpose of eating the students, they literally said for the purpose of the students about to be eaten, which makes no sense, which is why we call it for the purpose of eating the students. So they took this word that would have been accusative, the accusative plural direct object of ad consumendum, they took that, they kept the discipulos, and then they used a gerundive to modify it, matching in the same case number and gender. That's why consumendos goes like that. We change from the singular accusative gerund to the neuter plural masculine accusative gerundive modifying discipulos. Don't worry, we'll see some more examples. Okay, let's look at the second sentence continuing our story. Magistra discipulos sir wabat wituperando. The teacher was protecting the students by chastising because that's what teachers do. We chastise people who misbehave. So in this sentence, it doesn't say exactly who is getting chastised. There is no direct object of vituperando. Okay, next sentence. Magistra discipulos sir wabat vituperando viva mortuo. Okay, so now we're giving um, what would be a direct object of vituperando. The teacher was protecting the students by chastising the zombie. So again, what we would expect to see would be vituperando viva um in the accusative case by chastising the zombie, but instead Latin is going to do that gerund gerundive flip-flop by taking the case, the ablative case, and applying it to the zombie and then making the gerundive with tuperando match the zombie in case number and gender. We were more to us discipulos terebat nicando. The zombie was frightening the students by killing. Yeah, I think you guys would be a little bit frightened. Okay, so in this sentence, again, our gerund is in the ablative case, and it does not have an object to receive whoever gets the unfortunate action of the killing. Now let's look at our next sentence. We were more to us discipulos terebat magistra nakanda. Okay, so instead of having magistram up here by killing the teacher, Latin takes the teacher being killed, putting her in the ablative case, and then gives her a gerundive to match it in case number and gender. So notice that's why we have this long A. 
because the student is modifying the teacher. So the student was frightening, my bad, the zombie was frightening the students by killing the teacher. Discipuli erant cupidi wincandi. Okay, hopefully you remember from our last lesson that cupidi is an adjective that usually raises the expectation of a genitive, which is what we have here with wincandi. The students were eager of avenging. So basically they were eager to avenge. They were eager of avenging. And again, we're not saying who the students wanted to avenge in this first sentence. Now let's look at the next one. The students are discipuli erant cupidi magistri windicandi. Oh, how thoughtful. The students were eager of avenging the teacher. So we take what would have been the direct object magistram and we do that flip-flop. Cupidi takes a genitive, so we're going to put the teacher in the genitive case and modify magistri with a gerundive in the same case number and gender as its antecedent, the teacher. Okay, let's see here. Discipuli erant fortes causa pugnandi. Well, I'm sure you remember that causa usually takes a gerund in the genitive case for the sake of something. The students were brave for the sake of fighting. So this is a genitive gerund here going with causa. Next sentence. Discipuli erant fortes causa we were mortui pugnandi. Now we have some more information. Um, they were brave for the sake of fighting who? Of fighting the zombie. So again, viva mortuum should be accusative as a direct object of pugnandi. But when we do the flip-flop, we take what case we need and turn the zombie into that case, genitive, because causa goes with a genitive. And then we give it a gerundive to modify it in the same case number and gender. So that's why for the sake of the zombie that must be fought or for the sake of fighting the zombie. The students were brave for the sake of fighting the zombie. Yay, the dramatic conclusion of our story. Discipuli arma pugnando contra viva mortum in venerent. Ooh, this sentence is a little more complicated. Let's see. I see a prepositional phrase here. Okay, and why do we have the direct object arma? Because it's a direct object of the main verb. The students found weapons for fighting against the zombie. Notice pugnando here is dative and it does not have a direct object. So it is a dative gerund because it is a verbal noun. Um, why did they find it? For fighting. Now let's look at our next sentence. Discipuli we will more to him, armies gerendis necoherent. Okay, the students killed the zombie. How did they kill the zombie? By bearing arms. So again, we could have said gerendo, G-E-R-E-N-D-O, arma, by bearing arms with arma as a direct object of this gerund, but Latin doesn't like that. Instead, they're gonna take that gerund with a direct object and convert it into an ablative noun with a matching gerundive to modify it instead. So this here, by, weight, by bearing arms, that's ablative. So now instead of taking arma as the accusative, they turn armis into the ablative and modify it with a matching gerundive. So there you have it, the gerund, gerundive flip-flop, a dead Latin teacher, a dead zombie, and lots of brave students.